Hello, welcome to Network Diagrams 2. Wow, well, this seems to be a very interesting network diagram. As you can see, we've got activity C having two arrows leading into it. We've got activity F with one, two, three arrows leading in. And then we've got activity H with one, two, three arrows leading in. So it kind of throws a wrench in being able to, you know, fool the system, so to speak. You have to know the reasons why you do certain things, otherwise you'll end up getting the answer incorrect. So we need to be aware of the forward pass, the backward pass. When we have multiple arrows leading in, we need to consider all of the predecessors. And when we are on the backward pass, we also need to consider all of the successor relationships before we make an informed decision. So here we are at the beginning. We know using the zero method that that will be a zero. We will add the duration to get a six. We can take that six and put it right up here in the early start of B because there's only one arrow leading into B, we can make that decision. We can also type in 11 to our early finish. 6 plus 5 is 11. Moving forward, we can also type in an 11 into the early start of E. And we can also type in a 15 because there's only one arrow leading in. So always be careful when you see the multiple arrows leading into something. If you don't have multiple arrows leading in, then you're good. If you do, then there is an issue. So here you can see we've only got one arrow leading in. So the sensible thing to do will be to move our six from here right into here. And that's our six. We can also add a one to get 7. What next? Well, we can see that moving in to task C, we've got both task A and D as being our predecessors. So our informed decision would be if task C is dependent on both A and D, we need to take the largest number in the EF because even if task A is done, we can't go to task C because it's also dependent on task D. And task D is the largest early finish. It's the longest one, so we need to take task D. And that's why we would have a 7 here and not a 6. So do be careful. You don't want to move that 6 in there till you're sure of what task D has to offer. And as you can see, task D is indeed the largest early finish. We can add a 3 to that 7 and that will give us a 10. Now we can see that we've got two activities that are predecessors to task F. This is where we need to be kinda careful. And actually not just two, what about the G down there? You can see the G down there leads into task F as well. So you do need to know what that task E, that task C, and that task G have to offer as far as the highest early finish, which will indeed become the early start. So before you make up your mind, we need to take that 7 and put that 7 down there. And then we're going to add a 12 to get... 19 and there we can see that the EF for task G is the largest number. Don't rush and don't grab the 15 or the 10. You need to look at all your options. So we take that 19, we put that 19 over there and then we will add a 10 to get 29. There's our 29. Now, we can also make another informed decision. 
because we can see that we've got a 15, a 29 and a 19. We've got three activities that task H is dependent on. What you need to do is take the largest number because even if you get done with task E, you still can't do task H because you've got other activities that are larger. 19 is larger than 15 but 29 is larger. So that means just assume on the 29th day that is when you are going to be able to move into task H. You cannot do that on the 15th day. You can't do that on the 19th day because you've still got task F. So our early start for task H becomes 29. Add in an 8 to 29 will give us 37. And that's how you get 37. Now the backward pass, you're going to drop your 37 down to the bottom. 37. We're going to subtract 8, the duration for task H, from the latest time it can finish to find the earliest time, to find the latest time it can start, I beg your pardon. And that will give us 29. Now we can take that 29 and we can move it here because going backwards we only have one arrow leading back into activity F. So you can see the head of the arrow and then activity F. And that's the only one really that is that way. The head of the arrow and then activity F. So that's going to be our first one. So we're going to take that 29 and we're going to put that there and then we're going to subtract 29 minus 10 and that will give us 19. Now you probably notice you did that for task F. How about doing that for task E and G? Well you can't do that for task E and G because if you see we've got one arrow leading in, another arrow leading into task E. That's two options. So we do need to know what is the smallest number between H and F that both lead into E. If you look at task G we've got F leading back in, if you go on the backward pass leading back into G, you've also got H leading back into G. So you do need to make a decision between H and F anyway. So before we drag our 29 anywhere, hold your horses and take a look. 29, 19. Which number is the smallest number? You always need to take the smallest number when you've got two activities leading in on the backward pass. Okay, So that means between 29 and 19 we need to take the 19. Now you might want to press the pause button and try and get the logic because that's where lots of people make a mistake on this particular problem. So 19 is going to be our late finish for task E and it's also going to be a late finish for task G. So you put a 19 in there, put a 19 in there. We subtract 19 minus 4 to give us 15. We also subtract 19 minus 12 to give us 7. Now we need to move back, which shouldn't be a problem. We take that 7, put that there. 7 minus 1 will give us a 6. Moving back, we can take that 19. We can put that there because we've only got one leading into task C anyway. 19 minus 3 is 16. We do a quick sanity check here. 19 minus 10 is 9. 16 minus 7 is also 9. So that means we're good. And really what we did was a quick check on the float just to make sure the floats were right. Check the floats in all the other boxes. They are all the same. Um, e LS minus ES is the same as LF minus EF. That's really what we need to check. Found out that works. The next thing we'll do is take this 15 move back and then 15 minus 5 is 10. 
do a quick check here 15 minus 11 is 4 10 minus 6 is 4 so there's one last thing to do we need to make an informed decision here regarding which of these will go in LF is it going to be C is it going to be B or is it going to be D you remember the rule when you're going back and you've got several paths leading in so we've got arrowhead line into the task arrowhead there line into the task an arrowhead there and a line into the task we need to take the smallest late start and the smallest late start between 10 16 and 6 is 10 let's put that 6 in there and 6 minus 6 is 0 and that's how we end up with that solution